This week on Media Delta, Game Center CX, Season 1. Lolo, on! Hello and welcome to a new episode of Media Delta. Um, today we are talking about a very interesting series, and one that um, is kind of a bit of a new, like, there's always been shows that have kind of, like, focused on games and all that. This is kind of a newer I say I say newer in parentheses in that the fact that uh it is something from this century. Uh it does have to do with retro games though. Um so I felt like it was kind of appropriate to talk about, uh especially since like this is a pretty big show, uh or a pretty popular show in retro circles. Uh today we are talking about Game Center CX, uh, which is a show that is well, it's basically a Japanese comedian tries to beat video games. It's basically a let's play before let's plays kind of got big. Um, or has mind. people try to beat them for him. Yeah, <laughs> like children, <laughs> literal children. Um, yeah. So the main kind of the big draw is the uh, the main host of this, who is uh, Shinya Arino, uh, who is. In Japan, known as most, it's he's one half of a Bokusukamori group that is, I believe, called Yoiko. Uh, Yoko? Yeah, Yoiko, I believe, is the group. Um, and yeah, he kind of did the solo thing. And basically, Yoiko is kind of known as a nerdy kind of comedy duo. So yeah, I believe that he was the, uh, he wasn't the straight one, like the straight guy of the. That's not believe it or not, I use. the term is the straight man. Straight <laughs> man. Yeah, believe it or not, he actually is. Really? Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, his his comedy partner Hamaguchi is the uh, is the bokeh, the dummy. Oh, okay. To be fair, I can one hundred percent see it in his sort of presentation with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, he basically is now doing this show. Uh, it is actually still going. Uh, as of this recording, uh, there's going to be an episode Sunday, I believe. No, actually, I believe it is as of the day that we are recording this. Uh, an episode will go live in which he is playing House of the Dead. Which, oh, if you go yeah. and if you go and look that up, you can tell what day we recorded this. Um, but yes, uh, so yeah, this is still going. Um, we are only taking a look at the first season though, um, because this show's kind of gone in arcs, and uh, the first season was kind of a they were still getting their kind of their feet wet with these. Um, so enough of that. Uh, I should actually introduce who, because I was not the only one who actually watched this. Uh, I have three other people who watch this. Uh, so please introduce yourself in alphabetical order. Hold select and press down five times for Coolio. I don't have a cheat <laughs> uh, off the top of my head. I'm portable stove. Fuck it. I'm torpid typist and I'm here to get rejected by beautiful boys. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Uh, so yes, um, Game Center CX season one. Um, most of the time that they these um, the challenges in these shows are only really focused on one particular game. Uh, they're still kind of in these episodes, but it's they were kind of going for a company theme. Uh, for example, you had one that was based on Koei, in which they played uh, Angelique Troy, uh, Angelique Troy, actually, uh, as you probably should pronounce it. Um, yeah, uh, and then like uh, Taito, they played uh, Takeshi Challenge, and Konami, they had like a three part thing in which they played Year, Kung Fu, Gradius, and Track and Field. Well, Hyper Olympic, which is one half of Track and Field, but anyway. Um, yeah, so um, I guess we can just start uh, going into these questions. Uh, so, Coolio, um, what was your general impressions? Or are there any particular element you'd like to bring up? So I'm going to start by saying I've never watched this show before. I've barely heard anything about this show other than you know, it exists. So I had some preconceptions. Like it seemed like some sort of a game show to me in my mind, like something like I don't know, Nick Arcade. Um, and then I started watching it and realized that's completely not the, the, uh, the idea. It's like half talk show and half let's play. And um I found the kind of the, the talk show parts of it were 
actually kind of fascinating, uh, especially since I'm I've been trying to get into game design. So getting these game designers' point of view was, you know, super interesting to me at least. And um, the the video the video game portion of it was just kind of silly. Um, I, I don't I don't know if I don't. Hmm. Yeah, he's not. Sorry. Are, are you by any chance trying to say that he might not be the best at playing video games? Basically, yeah. Yeah, he's. In fact, I was just watching a um, uh, later season uh, episode just to kind of contrast since I never saw it before. And he doesn't really improve a whole lot. A little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, and as for any particular element, um, Takeshi's challenge is really not the best place to start a series like this. Um, it's literally the first episode. <laughs> yep. Yes, exactly. Um, so kind of an, an inauspicious start, but I mean, it's still going now, so they're doing something right. To be fair, you can feel this sense of defeat at the end when the game actively makes fun of him. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, he definitely. He, this is not a game or a show that you watch for high level play by any means. <laughs> uh, no. I don't know. You should see him play some visual novels. He does great at those. Uh, no, he did not, actually. He got rejected oh. every time. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, well, okay. He, 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 he did get the good ending on that one game which for some reason freaked out when it said they broke up initially (laughs) (laughs) i don't know why they chose romania 213 or 205 or no 203 there's Uh, a lot of questionable game choices honestly yeah uh so yeah um so yeah uh is there anything else you want to add coolio uh no i'm good all right stove so I'm the opposite in which I am a huge fan of Game Center CX. Um, Lolo can actually attest to me cosplaying as Arino at Magfest. I've seen it. Uh, yes, um, I have the uh, the DVD that was released in America, the uh, Retro Game Master DVD, and I've seen way too many episodes. I can't even remember which ones I have I have and haven't seen at this point. Um, that being said, the main episodes I hadn't seen are of season one. I have actually not seen anything from season one before. Um, so it was actually kind of interesting to go back and watch these ones where the challenge isn't the entire episode. Um, and honestly, yeah, I still think that the show is pretty good. I don't know if it would have necessarily had the longevity that it does now if it had kept this format. But, um... I I generally like Game Center CX. I you know I think it's very funny when he's playing games, especially since, as was pointed out, he's not that great at them. But that's you know that adds on to the charm. Um and yeah, honestly, in terms of any particular elements that I want to bring up, just I do like that he f- it feels like he does have a uh, good rapport with the people that he's interviewing, and I find I find that. Uh, kind of interesting in that he's just able to, you know, sit down, have a chat, and they're able to, you know, laugh laugh about stuff that they've made or in the process of making. And I'm trying to get exclusive <laughs> exclusive news for the thing for the uh, show. Yeah, uh, it's he, he, there's a certain rapport that he has with people that's really uh, laid back, but also you can definitely tell that he's a train comedian. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I do feel worth mentioning. I always enjoy it when the uh, devs suck at their own game. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the devs are just saying, "Well, yeah, I'm a producer of a game, or I developed it. That doesn't mean I'm going to be good at it." My <laughs> my favorite one of those is um, there is a game that they played, and just as an aside. Uh, if that game gets translated, I am absolutely pushing stuff to the side to play it. Uh, it is a game uh, that roughly translates into something around the lines of the Hokkaido Chain Murders. Um, 
it's a game that was it's actually a considered a pseudo sequel to the Portopia serial murder case. Uh, it was a game developed by Yuji Horii, uh, and they had Yuji Horii on that episode. Uh, and Arino was trying to ask uh, him things, and he's like, "This is a long time ago. I forgot all these things. I'm too busy making Dragon Quest." Um, but yeah, uh, just his rapport with, especially especially like the old timers. There's actually a really good interview of him uh, talking with uh, Satori Wada, um, just about uh, it was quite. I know he was, it was, I believe it was when he was playing Balloon Fight uh, that yeah. he actually showed up. It was a special YouTube uh, deal where he, yeah, he was playing Balloon Fight and he also at the same time was interviewing Iwata and also Iwata was interviewing him at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that was a really good interview. Um, so um, in that case, uh, is there anything else to add? Eh, it's pretty much enough said until we uh, get into the deeper questions here. Okay, uh, Torpo. Uh, he's, he's good show. He's good show. He's good. <laughs> he's good. No, I, I actually really... I've seen this before. Uh, I, I'm not super hard into it, but I, I've seen this a few episodes before, uh, including the Famicom Detective Club one, which is very good. Uh, and I, I do think... I think the show's a lot of fun. Uh, Arno's a really good presenter, though. I'll go more into that. Uh, but in general... Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, uh, and I the format changes up a lot after the first season. Uh, they they sort of expand it instead of just being the challenges. Uh, they even start you see it changing in the first season, which we went through, where they start doing a uh, hot spring tour, which I'm sure him and the staff must have fucking loved. But uh, oh yeah, it, they they went to various little sort of arcades at hot springs uh, in Arado, sucked at them, uh, and wasted way too much money on little prize games that he didn't win. Yes. Damn you, NHK. NMK. Yep. Or NMK. He NMK. does get his revenge, though, in a later season. Yes. <laughs> NMK and Face for the ones who, who also developed those. Um, uh, yeah. Um, the, good, the thing about this that's really good is the fact that, like, a lot of times you go back to, like, the first season, and it's like, you try and go back to it, and it's like, oh, it just feels, like, off. It doesn't feel like these first episodes don't feel off. They feel different, which is a key thing because they still they're still very good. Uh, like you get to see him uh, to like toy around with uh, a steel battalion, uh, which is an experience as someone who's played steel battalion. Toy with in... steel battalion on a projector in a theater. Yeah, yeah. that's quite the experience. Yeah, and that's also at it. That's actually. That actually would probably, because if, if, if considering how close he was, that actually probably seemed like it'd be a hindrance. Like there's yeah. just, that's just way too big of a screen. Yeah, because he was basically in the front row. But uh, you know, so th that's the thing I appreciate is that he isn't great at video games. He's average. He's perfectly fine. He's just a normal fucking schlub playing video games. Yes. And I can appreciate that it's not some sort of high level play. It's just a guy having fun playing games. Him and his staff. His staff seem to enjoy it too, uh, which I appreciate at least. Yeah, yeah, everyone really seems to have fun making that show. Like everyone's laughing all the time. It, um, yes. That said, it feels like the games they pick are whatever they found in the box today. <laughs> just rifling through the back room. Ah, we have this. PS2 Odome game. Sure, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know they have some kind of process to it. They kind of showed it off before, but also it pretty much is that, really. It does come down to that. Yeah, I have the Wikipedia page for um, like this show open and list all the games that he's ever played. Uh, and it's a pretty decent, like, it's a pretty widespread. Um, he has, I don't, the only thing I, like, I don't, I think I see a whole lot of there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of racing games, but granted, uh, that really wouldn't fit the format. But uh, you, you see do see seen them all. You see shmups. You see <laughs> action games, RPGs. Uh, he has a three-parter in which he tries and tackles the uh, Earthbound, um, and awkward like things like awkward in time. Um, and yeah, it, heads up, like episodes kind of like honestly the zelda episodes are kind of weak because just because the zelda games are so like exploratory 
so that they have to skip they have to skip around a lot of stuff and it just kind of isn't that great in my opinion anyway yeah um actually um we'll probably like we're definitely coming back to this after this one episode because we're just talking about season one for this um but the best shows that i have found my favorite episodes of these to watch are the ones in which he plays quizzes game quiz games because there's yes. a lot of them <laughs> those are really good he knows a lot about etchy anime <laughs> oh my <laughs> He's ve- he's ve- he knows a lot about cream lemon. Yes, yes, he does. Really <laughs> noted. Uh, yes, uh, it's really funny. Um, but also, especially since um, you get a cult, a sense of cult, like um, you just get a sense of culture from those episodes too. That you're just not going to be able to get if you're like if if someone were to translate those games, you would get a lack of cultural relevance that you would get actually get by watching him play that um it's rice ball time it's rice ball time um yeah so i think that's probably good for that uh so uh uh, but uh what was you had some dad uh i mean not particularly you skipped over me it's rude it's very rude i wanted to talk about the otome game and how great it was i thought you were talk. you already finished anyway No, okay. I'll just take you over. Can, you can continue. Uh, no, so that's the thing is I also appreciate is he just really gets into everything he does, like to the point where he sometimes forgets about the time. And it was one episode, uh, I don't think it was part of this match that, that we had watched, where he literally just forgot it was super late at night at that point. <laughs> yeah, that he had been playing for 24 hours. <laughs> or yeah. like, maybe not no, 24 no, it was 12 but... hours, I think, or 10 or 12. Yeah. Way, way longer than the game that for the game that he was playing essentially um yeah yeah, there's there's a certain fun and passion that he brings to it that i always appreciate like once again with the otome game he got super into it like really into it (laughs) to the point where he felt genuinely let down when he got turned down from the guy he was pursuing yeah also it's great watching those because you like riffing on otome games has been a thing that like it's definitely happened recently like especially with that uh new anime that's like starting to air uh ah, that, yes yes that one uh that uh, was it my i'm i've i was reincarnated as the, the vil- like the my next life production. as a vin- as a villainous yes that one uh which is basically it's like you watch it it's like oh there's like oh it's like just making fun of things and then you see an actual otome game it's like oh those are that's just how they are like they're not like yeah, no, doing over generic really... thing though no, that's that's how they are um See, it's really yeah. fun for me seeing that kind of thing anyway knowing otome games and not just hearing about them <laughs> but uh yeah. yeah no it's I, I i just there's certain energy to it that really sucks you in and i i, I guess that's what i wanted to say okay um so i think we'll go on to the next question so Tarpo, uh, how do you feel about the formatting of this episode or this uh, batch of episodes? Uh, so this is actually a good batch to ask that about because uh, it's there was a change in formatting near the end of this, the, the our selection at least, because uh, initially it was just them playing the game and just the challenge, which is fine in fun and of itself. Uh, but then they started they they uh, did what was basically a, uh, a hot spring tour going to little arcades, various hot springs, which all felt really empty and lonely, if I'm going to be honest. They were, it felt kind of sad. Uh, but yeah, so they just went around on a hot spring tour, and they just kind of kept that in between uh, bits of the action to kind of break it up, so it's not just that. And uh, you can really see how it develops into what the show would become, uh, and I, I honestly quite appreciated that. Okay. Um, so. But kind of brought this up a little earlier. Um, I I enjoy the format of the first season uh, across the episodes that I watched. Um, I honestly think though they did kind of make the right the right call in making the challenge more of the uh, focus on that, if only because like yes, there are many 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 uh, game companies you could speak to and people that you can get stories from, but also like. I guess just kind of jumping around from person to person and then some instances of 
well, we want to talk about this game, but nobody's here anymore because, hey, this game was a huge steaming pile of crap. Uh, no one's here anymore. They're all gone. Um, I still think this this uh, first season is good as a as a start, but I kind of think that they do fine tune it eventually. And even season two, there's still some elements of that there where he's playing, I think it's uh, Ghosts and Goblins, and he has to go to uh, Capcom to do an interview. So I don't know. I think I think it's uh, good for a start. It's a very interesting season for sure. I just kind of think that I definitely do prefer the more, the different feel of it later on, even though the foundation is still there. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh-huh. Coolio. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the format of the show is pretty good for the most part. Um, one thing that kind of threw me off when I started watching was that they started the challenge games really late in the episodes. Um, I was expecting a little more presence from those games and uh, watching a much later episode, I realized, you know, that's what they end up doing. Um, but uh, overall, I do enjoy it. I enjoy the um, the the host parts, the uh, talk show type of parts and the gameplay. It's all good to me. OK. Uh, yeah. Uh... It is weird that they do start like the actual challenge, like kind of like I would say maybe like start of uh, like two fifths into the episode. Like they always have like this little opening preamble bit, and then they actually start to get into it. Like I think yeah, the they're... challenge didn't start until like well past halfway. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Because they're because the... yeah, like to catch a challenge that has that cultural kind of phenomenon thing. Like it is uh, one of the games that is known. <laughs> I believe known as uh, my uh, a very a term that I very much enjoy, uh, which is Detsetsu no Kusuge, uh, which is a legendarily shitty game, uh, and I feel like going into it a little bit, like it almost seems like that's kind of the thing where it was going for, like it was more meant to be like, oh, here's those weird this weird game thing that happened, uh, and just go on that, but it just kind of became a general game thing. Uh. I will say also that the initial episodes are very short. So when we're saying like half an episode is a challenge, that was like, what, five minutes? Yeah, I I think so. I, I couldn't find anything conclusive on the actual formatting of these shows. I believe that there are like this almost seemed like it kind of came out of something else. Hmm. Um, but it just seems like it was being that short. It was a TV show, so it yeah. does fit. It had to fit into like the half minute box. And I, I wonder if there was just something that got cut for a lot of the re-releases. Um, yeah. Because... I, I, I'm the, the way that I figure what happened is they probably had like entire hour long shows. Just they got lost somewhere along the way. And all, all that we have left for most of season one is the challenge part. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 because yeah, like especially these, like the longest part of this thing was a thirty-minute episode. Like at the very end, when he tries and re technically that last one is actually uh, was a special uh, that wasn't part of the main thing. Uh, but yeah, that was like th- it was like thirty-six minute long, and like every episode after this, like an hour long. Um, so there, there's also that these episodes are much shorter. Um, which granted the games that he's playing are mostly pretty short games. Like the long, like the longest game that he played was essentially that, uh, Angelique T- uh, Twa or, um, Romania might be, I don't know how long either of those are, but those are probably the longest games he played. Um, cause for the mo- like one of the episodes is just straight up, uh, try and beat the, try and perfect the, the first challenging stage in Galaga. Like they're not, they're not like, Oh, beat this game that takes like an hour and a half to beat. They're just playing these kind of shorter games. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, the far, I mean, yeah, I think I kind of said what I said about as a, the format. Uh, so let's, let's just move on to the next question. So, uh, Coolio, how did you like Arino as a presenter? 
Uh, I think he's a pretty cool guy. I mean, like, like it's been established, he is a uh, professional comedian. Um, in the host segments, he knows like how to keep the, the conversation going. He establishes a good rapport with everyone. And in the video game segments, he is a pretty average player. And he also, you know, has a good sense of humor. Like he doesn't really ever get angry at the game. Um, there are a couple of occasions where he might get frustrated, but he never gets angry. He just kind of laughs everything off. And so that makes it just that much more watchable. So yeah, it's, he is an excellent choice for this show. It, that is one thing to point out that is that he does not get like, he is very much in stride with whatever a game will throw at him. And the maybe not so much in this one, but there are games that will throw up like, throw like massive curveballs um especially a great one is games that have a uh, kind of obscure continue codes uh which he will eventually forget midway through and then have to play the entire game over again um those are always fun to watch um but yeah um stuff so. yeah i mean you can definitely tell that he has Plenty of experience being on TV and being the host of a uh, variety show, uh, it seems like. Uh, he's just... He has a really good charisma, which is something that um, definitely helps out to the quality of the show, the quality of kind of how he talks and approaches uh, playing video games. It He's he's a very good fit for the uh, for the host, essentially. Because he's able to come up with stuff that he just uh, he finds funny. The fu he finds to he comes up with stuff that he likes to comment on, uh, perform a retort or whatever. Um, and yeah, he's just he just comes off as a really likable guy, albeit one that's kind of uh, <laughs> kind of does lean into being a dirty old man. But that's that's Ari now for you. Yeah. There, there is a Twitter out there that is um, uh, Game Center CX out of context that has some really good quotes from him. Uh, he is also a person that can make a very good face. Um, yeah. Yes. It. Yeah, he just has a really good rapport about, like, especially when like the staff tries and does something silly, like him just trying to play along with it's also really good. Hmm. Rice ball time. Yes. How do you put dried squid ball? Um, you can uh, put lots of fun things in a rice ball. You can, but sometimes you need to ask yourself, should I? It's the old yeah. Jurassic Park issue, yeah. Yes. Um. So, uh, is that it for you, stuff? Yeah, that's it. All right, Torpo. Damn, Arno has, uh, as a presenter, is absolutely fantastic honestly he has a very sort of easygoing charisma to him like like he just seems enjoyable to be around and seems very good at making people comfortable being around him like when it comes to like doing the interviews or when he brings in a literal child to play a video game for him everyone seems to be having fun it he's just in general he seems like like a pretty neat guy to be around uh and he even seems he even definitely has fun with the staff too uh bringing them on talking to them taking their advice when trying to make an incredible triangle jump. <laughs> uh, Emergency thing. And he definitely is, I mean, as you can definitely see his, his uh, skills and experience as a straight man uh, come through when playing these games, rolling with the punches and, and just pointing out the absurdity of all this. Cause some real dumb shit happens. Like mm. the dating sim game where he spent quite a lot of time with a character only to have them reject him anyway. And he, he seemed genuinely dejected. Like, he really gets into everything he plays, and I can really appreciate that. Hmm. So, uh, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I was just saying. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Arino's great. Like, he, he is basically the best person to host the show, just with his rapport. Um, I bet you, like, if you try to do this now, you try and get someone who would like try and mug at the camera and try and be more energetic. Uh, Arino just has the perfect, just straight lacedness to him that just makes the show really shine. Um, 
it wouldn't be quite as entertaining if the host was a lot more energetic. Like it's just it, that straight laced actually really helps it because it helps like it helps make it more of a marathon watch than a sprint kind of thing. Because there's no way you could keep up an energy for that long. Yeah. Also, it's it's a different kind of energy than you'd see from like a modern YouTube. Yeah. Which I guess is part of why I enjoy it personally. Um. So, um. With that, uh, Torpo, do you feel that the more regional, uh, the re- more regional segments help or hurt the game? Uh, help or hurt uh the game part? Uh, what do you mean by that? Honestly, uh, basically, I should probably rephrase it. Do you feel like the uh, regional or segment, uh, like the more Japanese focused segments, uh, help your enjoyment or hurt your enjoyment of the show overall? Uh, I mean, I I feel like they add a bit of flavor and also some context that really helps seeing these things or the games or even if it's just like once again him just going around chilling at hot springs it's still an interesting thing to see from an outsider standpoint i guess like i don't know i feel like they're very helpful and relevant to me as someone who isn't japanese so okay. it's my two cents all right um stuff See, they they don't really hurt the show itself they hurt me because i really wish we had arcades still God, I I want to go to a like arcade with a bunch of candy cabs at some point, but I have to go to Japan for that. Um, but no, I don't think it really hurts the show at all. If anything, I kind of dig the uh, idea of seeing how arcades are like in different regions of Japan. I, th- I think it's very interesting to me just kind of seeing um, different cultures within within the country, all just kind of through their. Uh, through their game centers, through candy stores and whatnot, just it's it's very interesting to me. It kind of feels like a travel show in a sense. Yeah, I could I can definitely see that. Uh yep. Yeah. Um so yep. Yeah. Uh cool yeah. Um, I entirely agree with Torpid and Sov. Um the the re- the regional segments, especially for people who are not in Japan looking inward. Um, they give a better idea of, you know, the gaming culture and, you know, just the culture in general. Um, and it was, especially with the, uh, the special, um, going to different hotels, seeing the arcades, the hot springs, like I've never seen a Japanese hot spring. That was, that was neat to be able to see. So, um, yeah, they, they definitely, give some extra flavor to the show. If it was just the game part, that would be fine. But with these uh, extra regional parts, just makes it better. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when, when me and Lolo were watching, at least, I'm pretty sure I remember Lolo spotting and pointing out a strip mahjong machine. <laughs> AKA, a- a- I saw a mahjong machine. <laughs> to be honest. A mahjong machine they avoided on purpose. Yes. Um, no, uh, well, also, it didn't help the, the fact that you, the, as they walked by, the thing that was on it was just a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, also, my favorite thing about that, uh, was realizing, uh, kind of the universal aspect of arcades, uh, in which, uh, when he got the high score, uh, he would always put his name as sex <laughs> every time, and he would look at the camera with the dumbest fucking look on his face. Like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Ah, sex. Uh, it was also great. What? Oh God! Which challenge was it? But it was one that he, uh, like I think it was, it was Galaga Grady's. or something. Thought, oh. No, it was it was it was Galaga. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where you because he, he had to play it over and over again. You just saw the entire scoreboard was just sex, <laughs> sex, 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 sex. It was really good the whole <laughs> way down. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I I think a general consensus is, yeah, we really like the international aspect of it, or at least also, Japanese aspect. But yeah, real quick, I will say, once again, in terms of format, it does help break things up, which I appreciate. But, That's uh, true. Yeah. Just a little aside. Mm. Yeah, I will point out, uh, as someone who does own the DVDs, uh, those are all just straight challenges. There aren't any segments in those. So it does get kind of... It does get kind of exhausting just going through the challenge itself, but it's it's not unwatchable. I'll say that. Um, 
I just do really like the segments, though. It does it does give a lot more to the show, really. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, there you have it. If you're gonna watch this, uh, watch it on watch it online. Uh, because do not watch it in the official releases. I guess. Um, eh, I, I'm sorry. I kind of phrased that weird. It, it's not. So much that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, so I, yeah. I was just mm-hmm. more. I was just pointing out that yeah. Uh, I do more feel for like, completeness sake. Yeah. 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 I'm just I'm just gonna say it helps to be more than just um, watching a man in a room playing a video game. And I know that's saying something. Nowadays, but still, I stand by that statement. I, I would say that as three of us at least uh, spend a majority of our time playing games on the internet. It's fine. You don't see my room. I don't have face cam. Same. You only get one half of that oh. instead. I don't think I'll be getting a postcard anytime soon telling me to check out this this uh, candy shop. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. No uh, VHSs in the mail. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, who, st- who started those questions? Was it Torpo? Did you yeah. start the original? Okay. Uh, so Coolio, uh, does watching the interviews or the challenge segments of these, uh, make you want to play any of these games that are focused on? Um, for this selection of games, I would say no, but not for lack of trying. Um, a lot of these games are either classics that, you know, played a hundred times before, or they're just games that are not especially interesting to me, but I'm sure if I kept watching the series past just season one, I would find plenty of games that would, you know, catch my attention that I would just want to dig into. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, so... So, on my end, yes, if only because the image of playing Steel Battalion on a theater projector looks fucking amazing, and I wish I could do that at some point, uh, which I probably will never get that opportunity ever, but, you know. But um, either way, like, even seeing uh, Inafune talk about Onimusha just kind of made me think, huh, I haven't played Onimusha in a good while and it's on the switch now i might want to give that a try again or um the koi episode huh, i haven't played any of the actual legitimate dynasty warriors games uh for a while i should try those it's generally just more being uh seeing something and being reminded oh yeah that's a thing and thinking immediately oh i should probably play that at some point so yeah th- that's just kind of how it works for me and game center cx is very bad about that thing about that just Reminding me this game is good and I should probably play it. Okay. Yep. Uh, Turbo. I mean, depends upon the game, really. <laughs> if it's a game I like, sure. If it's a game I don't care about, no. Especially because some of these are really, really niche. Like, holy shit, that fucking Otome game. Or fucking, what was the other dating sim? I don't even remember the uh, name. But... Room, Room Mania 2, 203, which only came out in Japan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, like, I, I appreciate Arno's energy, but he's not really there to make you play a game. He's kind of there to just have fun and have you watch. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's for, for the most part, no, unless he plays Dragon's Dogma, which will never happen. But No, he, he, uh, he has, in fact, not played Dragon's Dogma. I know. So what you're saying is we can't look forward to you playing Angelique Tra anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, no. I can only that- Pretty I don't sure think there's that, a patch for that either. Yeah, so. They're pretty sure that the Angelique franchise has not touched. There has not been a single English release of that series. I, you know, actually, I take that back. I think there was one, but nonetheless. I mean, it's it's fine. I can't handle rejection. <laughs> <laughs> My heart is too fragile. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, like actually watching, uh, like I'll say, it, like watching this series is actually a good source of me like taking like some of the games that I did for Retro and Grapsy, I I'd only thought about them because I had seen them in this show. Um I'm trying to think of specific ones. Like I know that um oh, I'm trying to think. Uh oh I'm trying to like I know that there's a couple that I've seen I'm just kind of browsing through. Like uh Princess Tomato and Salad Kingdom I probably wouldn't have played if 
like I hadn't seen it through that game, uh, that show. Um, stuff like say like the Ultraman games, I wouldn't probably like had a little bit of context for that. Uh, Quest of Key, he actually had a really good playthrough of that. Um, he actually played through that three times. Um, but yeah, uh, it is actually a really good idea of, uh, like just seeing these weird games that you probably wouldn't have touched before or like games that you've heard about and seen, but like having someone who's actually came from the region play it, uh, makes it have a lot more sense. Like, uh, Genpei Tomiden, uh, is a game that really, it really helps if you're Japanese to play that game. Um, or stuff like say, uh, like Tower Juaga is a thing. Like he would be of that generation that would have originally experienced Tower Juaga. Um, so seeing that through that context would kind of help. Yeah, and plenty of games too that only came out in Japan. So yeah. Also, another one that's actually another one that's reason is very similar, but in the actual opposite, uh, is seeing a game that came out over here first and seeing that from a uh, Japanese player perspective. Uh, like it was actually kind of funny at the end of when he beats uh, Super Mario Brothers Two. Uh, I say in, I, when he beats it. Um, Seeing him seeing that last the last little poem that appears at the end and him going, I can't read any of this. And I'm like, now you know how I feel playing both Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know that others can feel that pain as well. It goes both ways. Honestly, I just laughed at the end of the Capcom episode, just pointing out, here are all the games that Capcom made. Also, here's Grand Theft Auto 3 that they published in Japan. It's like, okay, yes. Yeah. <sighs> I do find it funny of all the games for Capcom to represent Capcom, they chose Steel Battalion. Uh, it's definitely a unique game. Yeah. Well, somebody's got to push those Xboxes in Japan. Yeah, I was going to say, because also it's special because it's an Xbox game in a Japanese show. Um, True. It is kind of weird just seeing the kind of, like, it's, it's kind of fascinating for me. You see a lot of the PC Engine uh, in this like in the show, you see the PC engine more often than you do like the Genesis. Uh, and it was especially funny because uh, I was looking through. Uh, he has played a grand total of one Mark III game or one match system game. It's the uh, one you think it is. Yes. Rice ball time, <laughs> motherfucker. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah I, I think that's enough of season one of or talk, us discussing season one of Game Center CX. So let's go ahead and rank season one. Uh, so if you are not familiar uh, with our show, uh, we rank stuff on a scale of one to 21 uh, with three outliers of which I don't think that this, I think this is going to get just straight ranked. Um, we have one to 21 scale uh, with one being considered absolute mastercraft. Like there is no, like it is the best of its genre. And also it's just very good in general. Um, going down to 21, which is, this is painful to watch. I even ironically, like you get no enjoyment out of it at all. Um, so, uh, starting with, uh, Coolio, uh, what would you, what number would you give this? Um, I thought about it and I would give it a floor of five, but I would go anywhere above five, really. So floor of five. So say anything. Anything to five? Yeah. All right, stuff. Honestly, I would say five itself as well. I, It's kind of weird because I can't necessarily think of much to complain about, but um, I I think five is a good place for it still. Yeah, especially this, it's season one. We're not yeah. talking about the show as a whole. The important distinction is we're talking about season one here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, to be fair, the show itself is is niche. Yeah. Uh, so Torpo, I was gonna say five, and I'm glad everyone's on the same fucking <laughs> level. Yep, that and you know, it's, that. it's better than Labyrinth, worse than East. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I I have no problem putting Game Center CX season one or season one at uh, at five. That's, 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 it's worse than East. It's that's worse than East. Um. Pat Labor is also significantly better. Yes. I, you know, I would probably watch Pat Labor over. I mean, this, yes, but that's because Pat Labor's really. Yes. 
Also, you know, the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movies, Project Dirty Bear, Project Eden, Aliens, also, and Die, Die Hard still remains the only number one. I mean, we'll see if that will continue for... We have some stuff that could... Well, we'll find out when yeah. Ghost in the Shell hits number one. <laughs> we'll see. I will uh, fucking destroy anyone who stands in my way. You know, I'll probably be on your side for that one. I have not seen that in a while, actually, so I'll have to... Oh, it's, it's, I've seen it so many times. I also want to label this as a documentary, even though it kind of, in a weird way, it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but whimsical. Um, so is there anything we want to call out in music, charm, cinematography, storytelling, charm. action, or charm. art? Yeah, charm. I think charm. 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 <laughs> There's some weird music choices too. Um uh, cuz in one of them I fucking heard the uh orgy cover of Blue Monday, which uh, is why. Also huh? Yeah. Uh also in a later one, all right, can't remember if it was in if it was in that batch or if it was one we were, that we just watched. Um I definitely heard Linda Linda in the background. Yes, that was the later one we watched. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because they just they there there's weird like interstitial music that they use sometimes. Like in season one, it's pretty like definitely obscure stuff. I'm pretty sure immigrant immigrant song just shows up quite a few times throughout the series. I, I mean, once again, the thing that still caught me off guard like the most was the orgy cover of Blue Monday. Yes, that they cut to hell. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, like the cinematography's not bad, but it's not something I would call like stellar. No, um, it's, it's serviceable. It's, story doesn't count, and a- action doesn't count, uh, and art really doesn't count. Um, year nay, I can't really think of anything. Would simply fun charm. apply? Is there was it? Would simply fun apply? Because it it kind of is. I, I can see that. Finally, the perfect time to use someone's got a fetish. <laughs> no, that was that was Adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog, which I did. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I, considering that's what I that's what I was thinking of when I thought, thought of that charm. Uh, yeah, I got nothing honestly for yeah or nay. Just Finally, good time, good characters for story. Oh, also excellent, but uh, simply fun and nay, which is definitely yeah, not the case. Um, yeah, I I think that's good for it because I can't really think of anything nay wise because I wouldn't like put it down for being early because it's still good even though it's just different. It was good. It's just growing pains. Yeah. Um. So with that, uh, that is Game Center CX season one. Uh. So, yeah. Um. Before we move on. Um, Coolio, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, yes, uh, a couple of things. One, my uh, Let's Play group, Low Bias Gaming at lowbiasgaming.net, and also my show, Square Wave Symphony, um, which can be found at lowbiasgaming.net slash square sim, S Y M, and also at square sim on Twitter. Okay, uh, Stove. Um, I can be found at uh, twitch.com and twitter.com slash portable stove. I'd also like to shout out uh, just real quick, uh, because I know this is season one, but I want to point out there is a game uh, called Retro Game Challenge that is, which is basically uh, the Game Center CX video game. It is super good. If you could find it on the DS, get it. That's my shout out. Okay. Uh, Turbo. Uh, twitch.tv slash torpotypist and at torpotypist on Twitter and I would like to plug my mouth full of this hot spring egg <laughs> I'm gonna I don't think that's advisable too late I think it actually is rice ball time now <laughs> um well uh that does it for Game Center CX season one so um since we only had one episode of Sonic Sad Am, uh, we decided to switch what we were talking about. Uh, we still have a show that is a technic- or a thing we're talking about that technically has something to do with running, but it's not running fast. Well, kind of running fast, but we're talking about the running man. 
because yeah. let's face it, that's what Smash TV is basically based yeah. on. So uh, good. Which also means it's our first Schwarzenegger movie. Oh, the Running Man so fucking good. Honestly, surprised you haven't done like uh, Predator or anything like that yet. We haven't technically done a game based on Predator yet, surprisingly enough. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, because the only Predator games that I can think of, there is like a weird, obscure MSX one, and there's a really shitty NES game based on it. Um, but yeah, also we haven't done Alien vs. Predator or anything. So, yeah, that actually kind of surprised me either. Uh, also, I need to figure out a justification for us to do Commando, which is definitely... That is also yeah. another movie that will telling you to. That is also that is also another movie that will probably fight for number one. Commando's well, so look, good. you did Adventures of Lolo based off of playing the Adventures of Lolo. Just just play Commando, and you can review Commando. There you go. It's we simple as that. I mean, Commando. look, there's something coming up in June that is so tangentially related. There's no excuse. Yes, yes, we we should probably do. Commando at some point. Yes, uh, yes, we fucking should. Yes, uh, Commando's really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, with that, that'll do it. Um, so hopefully you tune in next week for The Running Man, and thank you all for listening. If you would like to look at the full list of rankings for yourself, please visit r3.ldp.life and go to the Media Delta List tab. If you would like to watch Media Delta's sister show, Retro Rank Rhapsody. You can either watch at youtube.ltp.life or by tuning into twitch.tv slash lodapuzzlo at 7.30 p.m. on Fridays, 2.30 p.m. on Saturdays, and 1 p.m. on Sundays. All those times are from the Eastern U.S. time zone. If you would like to discuss this episode with the community, you can do so by joining our Discord server, which you can do so by going to discord.ltp.life. Thank you again for listening. And I hope you tune in for our next episode.